Welcome into another edition of Mix in the Water Monday. It is a victory Monday again for South Carolina as they ended Clemson's seven-game winning streak, winning the 119th edition of the Palmetto Bowl over the weekend. And a man that knows a thing or two about beating Clemson. I reached out to him in the past. He said, I'm only coming on if USC beats Clemson. Well, they did that. And that man is right here with us today, DJ Swearinger. DJ, how you doing, bud? Man, I'm blessed as ever, man. How y'all doing, man? I'm happy to be on now that we got the win. How I know. You doing? told me last week. You said only if they beat Clemson, they did yes, it. Sir. Yes, sir, Thank man. You. you know I had to see consistency. That's all I've been asking for, and I knew Bing was going to get it done. What does it mean to you, though, as an alum, to be able to see South Carolina do that? Because I'm sure you, you have relationships with, whether it be teammates in the NFL or just buddies, right, that played at Clemson. And they probably, you know, bust your chops, you know, seven straight, this and right. that. Right. To be able to get that win, though, as an alum, how proud of you are you? Man, I'm extremely proud, man. I'm extremely proud of Coach Beamer. I'm extremely proud of how the guys fought. Um, to be able to put two games back to back like like they just, like we just did, man, it's um it's an unbelievable feeling as an alum, and it's a it's a big testimony to um not only just Coach Beamer and the whole coaching staff, but um, you know, the grit that these guys fought with these past two weeks, you know, being the underdog. And, um, you know, that's sort of the kind of thing that um, we we feed off of, you know, as of old or new, you know, as being the underdogs and being able to uh, fight in those big games. And, man, you know, they made history these last two weeks. Man, I couldn't be so proud of them. You mentioned Shane Beamer had an opportunity to – be over there when Spurrier was there with him as well. And yeah. what does this say, though, for a guy like that, right? You can go into a situation, you can say, this is what we want to do, right? From a recruiting standpoint, this is what we envision. But yeah. to be able to get seven wins last year, now they're up to eight, have another opportunity to get a ninth win after having six wins in the two previous seasons before he got here. What can this do on top of the big wins, back-to-back -back top ten wins these last two weeks? Man, it can be a huge. It can be huge for recruiting. It can be huge for the the movement of um. You know where we're trying to go. Um. You know we we were um. You know I don't like harping on us so much, but we were the winning in group um when I was there. But we haven't strung together. You know those type of wins where we beat back to back schools. Um. And we never won a national championship. You know what I'm saying. So um. I think these wins can um. You know just give the, the school, the city, give Coach Beamer and the players confidence to go into um, the last game, the bowl game, whichever it is, and to continue to go on next season to, um, you know, just stay on this same road, and you know what I'm saying, stay on this same high horse to, you know, let the recruits and let everybody in the nation know that, hey, man, South Carolina football is for real, and we can compete with the best of them. And, um, you know, that's, that's why I think – we're ahead of that, man. And um, it just, you know, it just took a little time for Beamer. And um, we strung together those wins that we needed to beat the top dog. So I think it's time for us to, you know, stay on this. Um, you know, the, the, standard, the standard is set. So it's like, that's what we expect now. And um, I don't expect nothing less moving forward. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's, and, um, you know, with, with that, you know, it comes a lot of pressure. But I think with how we played these past couple of weeks, man, I think we're ready for that. I don't know if you saw any of it. I'm sure you try to stay off social media and, and not deal with it. I have to deal with it from a job standpoint. But, you know, there's highs and lows. There's going to yes. be some lows. And okay. you know, a couple of weeks ago, there were some lows. And I think some people were questioning the decisions that Beamer was doing, questioning whether Beamer could handle the responsibility of being a head coach. Mm -hmm. To be in a situation now, fast forward a couple weeks later, beat Tennessee, beat Clemson. But you personally, I don't know if you saw any of that, um, but what would you just tell people about just the journey and just knowing Beamer the way that you do um, outside of obviously these two wins? Because I'm sure there were some people, like I said a couple weeks ago, they were they were probably ready to hop off the chain train. Yeah, man, but end of the day, man, it doesn't happen. You know, Rome wasn't built overnight, and, um, you know, um, when you're building a program and you're trying to uh, get everything how you want it and um, how, how you see fit in your vision, you know, it takes time to get everybody else on your same vision, especially as a head coach. Um, when you're leading men, you're leading hundreds, hundreds of players, um, 
over 20, 30 coaching staffs, you know what I'm saying? You got to get everybody on that same vision and that same high horse. And I think, um, you know, that just takes time. You know, it's ups, it's downs. But at the end of the day, you got to keep putting your foot in front of the next foot and keep going forward, man. And I think um, it's a testament to um, the type of guy Coach Bim is, the type of coach that he is. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you got to ignore the noise. Um, if there's no noise, then you, you're basically not doing something. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, you're not, it, it's no hope for you if it ain't no noise. So um, you just got to be able to respond. And I think he responded. The guys played well. The players, you know, responded with him. And um, he's the type of coach that um, you want to play for a coach like that, man. So um, it only it's only going to get better from here on out, man. He's a great guy, great coach. And, um, you know, I only wish the best for, you know, for what we got going forward. Defensively, we saw a lot of zero coverage, guys That's on cool. aisles. Mm -hmm. What does that say about the confidence that Clayton White has with his defensive backs and mm -hmm. to be able not to just have that confidence, but to be able to go out there and look, Clemson's going to get there. It's like we talked about Tennessee. When mm -hmm. you have talented guys out there, they're going to score eventually, right? But right. You're able to get the stops that they needed to in critical situations, especially at the end of the game, what does that say about the confidence he has with those guys? Man, you know, we um, those guys um, are a very talented group. And uh, we've always prided ourselves at South Carolina University from from now back from 20 years ago, way before we were there. Um, we, we always had DBs that could cover one-on-one. -on -one. And, um, you know, that, that just shows you that, you know, we have those DBs and we have talent in the back end that we can compete with anybody in the nation. And um, I think – you know, uh, you know, everybody has done a great job with, you know, just giving those guys the confidence that they need in practice to be able to go out and perform in those clutch situations, man. And um, because that's hard to do, you know, play zero coverage, um, put all the pressure on your DBs. Um, that's hard to do. And it takes a, a different type of player to be able to make to make plays. And um, we had we got those type of players, man. And um I want to give a shout out to uh, Marcellus Dell, man. He he had a, a hell of a game, man. That's you know that was a a first round type of game that he put put together today, man. And um, all the rest of those DBs as well, man. They they did a hell of a job, and um, I'm so proud of. Them. Yeah, not just that interception. You think about that third down situation could have been real easy to get yourself a pass interference call. How many times have we seen guys they panic? Right. They, they start to push a little bit and extend drives. But two guys I do want to bring up with you because we haven't had the opportunity to speak about them directly this season. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about that, just that edge that Cam Smith has. And they said they yeah. haven't seen it since you've played here. Right. As someone that has watched his game over the last couple of years, you know, what can you say about Cam Smith? Man, he has that grit, man. He has that dog. Um, he has that, um, you know, back when we was playing that goon squad mentality that, you know, it, you know, he's he's not showing any fear and he's he's striking fear into his opponents and he's playing with that confidence, you know, that swagger that you have to have when you're so called an underdog or you um you know, when people, you know, look at you like, Oh, you can't compete with us, but um he brings that mentality, he brings that dog mentality that um we had and um you know, um you know, I had talks with, with him in the past, I had talks with you know, the team in the past. And um, I feel like with Beamer, um, with what he brings and with the attitude that these kids bring, I feel like, you know, it was only a matter of time for a guy like him to be able to just step up and lead. And um, he did a great job of that these past two years. You know, I love how he plays the game um, with aggression, with swagger, with toughness. And, um, you know, I think, you know, that's just a testimony to where – we need to continue to be. We need to have guys like that that, um, that have that type of swagger and, and um, the type of game to back it up, you know, to keep moving forward, man. And, um, I tip my hat to Cam and the rest of those guys. You mentioned underdog, and this is the last player I'll ask directly about because a lot of people hope that he can be able to have a career like you, and he's off to a pretty good start, and that's true freshman from Irmo, yes, Nick, you worry. What does that say about a guy that comes right in we saw him get opportunities early in game one because of injuries. He started mm -hmm. game two and he hasn't looked back. Yeah, man, he's an exceptional player, man. Um, you know, that's one of those guys that you look you look back at and you like, oh yeah, he got it. 
you know, you know, he has that it, that it factor, you know, he, and the thing is, you know, he has the size and all, man. He's six foot, 220 pounds, man. He, he got it all, man, early, man. You know, he's a great player, man. I tip my hat to, to him. I'm um, looking forward to, um, you know, linking up with him and, um, you know, trying to give him some some knowledge that I have to, to continue to better his game. And I only see him being a top 10 pick, you know, with, with his early start, with his intangibles, with his ability to tackle the ball carry and, um, you know, do it at such a young age. Um, I think the sky's the limit for him, man. And I'm, I'm so happy to see that we have a safety of that caliber, man, to, you know, just be to be able to fly around and, and, and do what he does, man. And um, I'm, I'm very proud of that guy. DJ, we'll have to wait and see where South Carolina is playing in their bowl game. I know the Gator Bowl has been floating out there. Could be the Citrus Bowl now with the win today. Mm -hmm. But regardless, how do you carry this momentum over, right? You might not play for a month. You might not play, obviously, for a couple of weeks. How do you keep this energy going? Because obviously eight wins will be most likely ranked when the rankings come out next week. That's all great. But to mm -hmm. be able to get that ninth win, especially knowing that just a couple of years ago, you had six wins combined in 19 and then the 2020 season. What do you do now to be able to say, hey, look, this is great. Two big wins back to back weeks, but we're not done yet. Right. It's all on your scenes um, because at the end of the day, um, it'll be the last time they strap it up. Um, with the game caught uniform, and those guys have worked so hard. They've seen the highs. I mean, they've seen the lows of the six wins, like you just said, and they've seen the progression to where they are now, to where, you know, they're kind of on a high horse. But at the end of the day, um, you got to finish. Um, the seniors have to finish for themselves, and the seniors have to uh, – and the, the, the underclassmen have to want to get the victory for – there are scenes to send them off the right way, man. And um, it'll take a collective group. Um, I think it, it boils down to Coach Beeman being able to, to keep the guys focused as well. But at the end of the day, man, it comes down to the seniors and, and them understanding that, man, the job is not done. We can finish this year off and, um, you know, be a part of history to to be one of the teams that got got us back to where we're going, you know, to, to where we needed to go. And, um I just think, you know, the seniors, along with Coach Beamer, coming together, man, we can still – they can still understand that they have a lot to play for and they can they need to finish where they start. I know a lot of Gamecock fans would get upset with me if I didn't ask you just how has DJ been. So, DJ, how have you been? And can you just tell people what you've been up to? Man, I've been blessed, man. I'm blessed as ever. Um, right now, I'm still working out. I want to um, – I want to give it one more go. Um Played nine years in the league. I want to. I want to finish on year ten or eleven. You know, um, God willing. So I'm looking to give it one more run. Um, just waiting for that call. There's a few teams reached out, asked me am I in shape, but you know they they know they they know that I'm in shape, man. If anybody in shape, they know I'm in shape, man. But um, so yeah, man. I just been enjoying my family, enjoying my kids, and um, you know, taking care of other businesses that I have for when I'm done playing ball, man. But at the end of the day, baby, I'm still in shape. I'm still ready to go. I still got the love for the game, man. And, um, you know, the game caught win today made me even more hungry to scrap it up. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm in great spirits, man. I'm doing well. And um, y'all will see me out there very soon. So what you're saying is year nine, year 10, if it happens, you, you give a lot of credit to this team today is what you're saying. Oh, yeah, man. I give a lot of credit to give me some more motivation to – to be able to go in the locker room and be like, hey, man, y'all seen them game cops, right? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the last couple of years in the locker room, it ain't been good for me. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm looking forward to talking some trash to some Slowly but surely. teammates. And one thing, too, I want to add, DJ, because you do such a great job in the community. You want to just plug it. If you want to be able to help out in what DJ does, he does a tremendous job with the Two Spoons Foundation. Go visit their website, two as in the number, spoons, S-P-O-O-N-Z dot org. Um, you have been able to change the life of many people throughout this state, but I know it goes beyond that, DJ. So continue to do that, buddy, and continue to, to, to be a great example in this community. Most definitely will do. I appreciate you for having me, my man.